Good evening friends this is Karthik from University of New Haven so I'm a passed out grad student today I'm here to discuss a little bit about compiler uh, I should say one aspect of a compiler and what's a compiler as a noun a compiler as a noun means a person who like um, fetches information from various sources and puts them together to form one single document in a ordered way so that is something called as compiler as a noun but as computer engineers when we talk about compilers a compiler is nothing but which converts the high level language to machine level language so now uh, let us try to understand compiler in simple terms by splitting up into minimum number of stages because the compiler as such can be divided into multiple number of stages that's compiler design but now in order to make everyone understand in a very easy way so let us understand like by splitting them up splitting it up into like uh, two stages the first stage of compiler is like conversion of the high level language like your C language, Java or whatever it is. Converting that high level language to an assembly level language depending on the processor architecture for which the program is written. So that is one stage. And the second stage is conversion of that assembly level language to the machine level language. So these are the two different stages of a compiler in very simple terms. That's the first part of the story. And second part, what is a compiler and an interpreter? So this is a doubt. Uh, actually, I had the same question when I started computer architecture, like uh, when I started to learn about computer architecture. So what is the difference between compiler and interpreter? An interpreter is something which converts a code line by line during the runtime. And that's the whole point. But a compiler converts the program as a whole at one shot. Like it goes line by line, but it, it, it gives the entire output. Like it goes through the entire program and then lets the programmer know like what is the kind of error or whether the program was good to go so that's how a compiler works but an interpreter on the other hand goes by line by line and that's why we call few set of softwares as compilers and some as interpreters and one good example would be a python interpreter we never say a python compiler but a python interpreter because uh, everyone knows a python a single line of code can execute without any problem for example say we have three or four lines of code in a python program and there is error in one of them and the others are good still the program executes and those lines which are good which are logically and semantically free of errors they go through and you still get the output and the rem remaining lines you get the errors but in compiler, that's not the case. In the entire C program of lakhs of line, even if one line goes wrong, or if there's a mistake in one place, the entire program is erroneous. So that's what the compiler says. So this is a difference between the compiler and the interpreter. So coming back to compiler now. So I said there are two different stages to make it simple. And now, so I'm going to talk only about the assembler uh, because I have written a piece of code for assembler so it doesn't have a GUI basically but I have tried to code a Python assembler so which basically works for a DLX, 32-bit DLX architecture. It converts the assembly level code written for the DLX 32-bit processor into a machine level code that's basically the hex file. It generates the hex file for that assembly level code. So let's see uh, how things work and uh, I will explain in detail like how the code is written. Thank you. Hello friends, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, now we are going to look at the demo of the assembler. 
so yeah before doing that uh, let me just go to the folder uh, and this is my folder where I have my Python assembler for the 32 bit uh, DLX architecture and this is my input file so I already opened it on notepad plus plus so here we go so this is my input file and you see assembly code which has labels and it does some basic arithmetic operation and it has some uh, jump instructions uh, and the assembler is not as simple as it looks but it's uh, fun to design assembler so this is it this is the input file and uh, now let us uh, have a brief look at the code so this is the code for the assembler and uh, my code like it runs for few hundreds but definitely in python it shouldn't happen so why because when i took this project uh, i was uh, new to python and at that time i was uh, not very comfortable implementing the functions and other aspects of python but otherwise the same program can be written in less than 150 lines so which is possible and i'm working on that otherwise uh, python is really very beautiful in terms of the features it has and the functions it has so you can see like uh, yeah these are the instructions you see the instructions here and the uh, corresponding uh, opcodes so just give just to give you a glimpse of how things would work so this is how it happens and you see like many such instructions and their opcodes here so this segment is used to like um, loop through the file the input file I would just mention things briefly I don't want to get into the details because it will take a lot of time so th this, this is how it is going to happen and now uh, coming to the objective of this uh, project like uh, the assembler is going to convert uh, the code provided here the assembly code uh, for that matter you can take any assembly code compatible assembly code any code should be converted to the machine level code that is nothing but our hex values or the uh, like set of op codes which in which are in a file okay uh, now uh, let look at, let us have a look at the folder so in this folder i have my input file and just my python file so let's run the uh, run the code now uh, i already kept the path ready so that we don't waste time let us uh, so now i'm going to run the code on command line by passing so this is my input file name as you saw earlier uh, let me name the output as output dot txt and once i hit enter now uh, you will see a number of lines per, like printed on this uh, window like on the console window or the sorry on the command prompt uh, those lines are just to keep me informed like what is going on inside the code so i have made like a uh, part of code which prints some errors uh, those kind of things just to keep me informed of the ongoings on the program and now let me press enter and you see these lines and uh, it gives a clear picture like how the code is being passed from the file line by line and how is it generating the binary and then the appropriate hex value so this is it and now let us go to the folder and you see that two different files have been generated so not present earlier and this is the output file but let me tell you what is input underscore int later so output so let us open output so when you see output this is what you see and this is all we what uh, this is all what we need this is my input and this is all i wanted so this is my hex value or and the appropriate like the yeah so now let's uh, have a look at the program so this is where i process my input argument for the looping through the file and this is where i did um, take care of the output file like reading it as an argument 
and this is the objective of our program like converting this entire assembly code into what is called a output file or hex file or machine level code or whatever it is so this is the hex file so at later part of this particular project like project number two would be to implement the data path simulator so uh, now I'm going to not talk anything about that so let us limit ourselves to this point and let uh, let me mention what is this so uh, when I designed like when I wrote the assembler I had a issue like uh, handling the formats and stuff so in order to do that I had to generate an intermediate file it need not be generated as such if you see the difference between this input and this inter input intermediate is just the labels and the way it is formatted just for my convenience it need not be done so this is the project and we have converted the input assembly language code to the hex file um, thank you so much for watching this video uh, I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so please feel free to comment or even advise me of my mistakes that I might have committed while doing this video or the assembler so thank you so much once again if you like this video please share it with your friends and colleagues thank you so much